Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So until now we have been uh, looking at the details of uh, normal shocks. So uh, we have looked at how to analyze them and get uh, relationship between all the flow parameters in terms of only the upstream uh, Mach number and uh, gamma. Now let us uh, continue with those discussions and see some more uh, facts about these uh, uh, normal shocks. And, uh, so, just to give a quick uh, recap, so the important uh, relationship that we get is that of uh, the Prandtl's relation uh, for normal shocks which is m1 star m2 star equal to 1 and uh, from this, uh, so the main principle used here is that it is an adiabatic flow and in adiabatic flow the star conditions uh, remain constant and um, you apply that condition along with the uh, conservation equations and you get relationships for density ratio across the shock, temperature ratio, pressure ratio and uh, entropy ratio as well as a stagnation pressure ratio. Since uh, shock waves um, generate entropy, uh, the stagnation pressure uh, decreases across the uh, shock. So, um, now, with these uh, information, let us move ahead and look at uh, what are the limiting uh, conditions for the shock wave. So, one thing is clear that uh, uh, the uh, char uh, characteristics of the shock depend only on the upstream condition that is Mach number and gamma. So, uh, if uh, Mach number upstream Mach number is increased continuously. So, the strength of the shock uh, depends uh, on Mach number and it is uh, generally referred to as the pressure ratio. So, as Mach number increases pressure ratio increases uh, uh, significantly. Uh, so, now uh, let us see what happens if Mach number tends to uh, infinity. So, it is it is uh, limit is known as the uh, strong shock limit because uh, here the pressure ratio can become really high. So, uh, first let us look at uh, the uh, Mach number uh, downstream of the shock. So, uh, the expression is over here uh, for Mach number uh, downstream of the shock and uh, uh, Mach number tends to uh, uh, it goes towards uh, infinity. So, you can uh, use the appropriate limit that m1 square, square tends to uh, infinity. Uh, so, uh, you can uh, sort of take out m1 from both of them and here you will get 1 by m1 square. So, as m1 square goes to infinity, infinity um, uh, 1 by m1 square uh, goes to 0 and if you apply that uh, particular limit uh, you see uh, that uh, m2 square tends to a finite value which is uh, gamma mi minus 1 by 2 gamma for a perfect gas of course, it is for a calorically perfect uh, gas. So, uh, m2 uh, reaches finite values as uh, a Mach number tends to infinity. We had an indication of this when we were looking at the uh, graphs of uh, uh, the uh, variables as uh, Mach number upstream Mach number is uh, increased in the previous class. So, uh, we saw that uh, the downstream Mach number saturates and uh, the reason is uh, that as it tends Mach number tends to infinity uh, m 2 reaches finite values and for air uh, it is uh, 0 0.377. Similarly, if you look at uh, the density ratio across the shock rho 2 by rho 1, uh, again uh, this is the 
expression for rho 2 by rho 1. Uh, it, uh, follow the similar procedure uh, that m 1 square tends to infinity and here also you observe that uh, the density ratio across the shock uh, reaches finite values. Uh, this is gamma plus 1 by uh, gamma minus 1 and for uh, air where gamma is 1.4 uh, this is equal to uh, 6. But for all other uh, parameters like the pressure ratio P2 by P1, uh, this uh, as um, M1 increases, uh, M1 square goes to higher and higher values of course, uh, 1 becomes uh, very small compared to that similarly this also is very small. So, it approximates to uh, 2 gamma M1 square by gamma plus 1 which tends to infinity. So, um, pressure ratio uh, goes to infinity and uh, temperature ratio is nothing but uh, multiplications of pressure ratio and uh, density ratio. So, since uh, pressure ratio increases to infinity even temperature ratio increases to infinity. So, this uh, limit that uh, shock waves are becoming very strong as Mach number increases. Uh, is known as the strong shock limit and in uh, strong shock limit uh, Mach number or uh, downstream of the shock and uh, density ratio uh, reach uh, finite values, uh, but pressure ratio and temperature ratio uh, can increase to infinite uh, values. Um, so, uh, what about uh, entropy? Entropy increases to infinity. Uh, as a consequence, uh, the uh, stagnation pressure ratio, uh, which is uh, P02 by P01, is nothing but E power minus delta S by R. So, as delta S increases to infinity, uh, P02 uh, by P01 tends to 0. So, stagnation pressure uh, decreases to uh, 0. So, uh, again uh, let us uh, review the uh, graphs that we had plotted earlier and discussed it. So, uh, as uh, our per our discussions are strong shock limit you can see that uh, uh, density quickly saturates uh, here uh, and the value should be 6 uh, and also uh, the Mach number downstream Mach number saturates to 0.377. Um, while uh, the pressure ratio and temperature ratio keep increasing and uh, the stagnation pressure ratio uh, continues to decrease and can decrease to uh, 0. So, uh, this is a strong shock limit. Now, uh, the other side of the spectrum is uh, when uh, the Mach number is very very close to a 1. So, you know that uh, shock waves uh, can be present only in uh, supersonic flows uh, and that is condition is Mach number should be greater than 1 and the strength of the shock uh, depends on the Mach number. So, uh, the weakest possible shock is uh, at Mach equal to uh, 1. So, uh, in the neighborhood of Mach number equal to 1, we get uh, the limit of uh, very weak shocks. So, let us look at uh, uh, the limit of uh, very weak shocks. So, uh, to look at this limit let us uh, uh, see uh, what is the, um, uh, isentro uh, the entropy change across the shock at uh, very weak conditions. So, uh, this is uh, the same expression for entropy. Uh, written in terms of pressure ratio and uh, density ratios and uh, pressure ratio and density ratio expressions for the normal shock is known. So, we substitute that in this expression over here and density ratio is substituted here. Now, this is in terms of parameter m square minus 1 or m 1 square minus 1. This parameter is uh, written uh, as uh, a coordinate uh, or so, sort of variable transformation is done where m is equal to m 1 square minus 1 or m 1 square is equal to uh, m plus 1. So, uh, this is to uh, make the analysis uh, feasible. Uh, now, uh, as 
now we are looking at the limit that m1 tends to 1 this is the weak shock limit uh, so if m1 tends to 1 m tends to uh, 0 so uh, m tends to very small values so uh, if you uh, now express the equation in terms of m as it is done over here uh, then you find that uh, these terms uh, 1 plus 2 gamma by gamma plus m or gamma minus 1 m by gamma plus 1 these terms are of the form uh, 1 plus x uh, whole power n um, where x is uh, small x is uh, small now here. So, uh, this can be expanded uh, uh, using the series that is this is in terms of log. So, you can use the power series to expand this log of um, 1 plus x okay, the expansion is given over here and uh, you expand all the terms 3 terms and collect uh, the terms together. Uh, there will be some uh, algebraic manipulations and cancellations and ultimately you uh, end up with the term 2 gamma m cube by 3 gamma plus 1 m square plus uh, higher order terms. The higher order terms are neglected even the uh, first order term if you look at it is uh, having a uh, term m cube that means it varies with the cube of uh, m. Now, m is already a small number uh, because m m 1 square minus 1 and m 1 is going towards uh, 1. Uh, so, uh, you see that as m 1 tends to uh, 1 uh, very quickly uh, rapidly delta s that is entropy change uh, goes to uh, 0. That means, in the uh, weak shock limit essentially uh, you are reaching uh, isentropic uh, conditions. Uh, so, the weak shock limit is almost like that of an uh, acoustic wave or isentropic uh, conditions. Okay. Having discussed the uh, strong shock and weak shock limits, uh, let us now look at another uh, uh, facet of these uh, uh, normal shocks uh, that is uh, the Hugonio equation. Uh, the Hugonio equation expresses uh, the properties across the normal shock only in terms of uh, thermodynamic variables and uh, the velocity does not figure in the expression. Uh, so, one can look at all possible shock states um, and we will see how to do that. Until now all the expressions for uh, normal shocks had uh, the upstream Mach number in uh, place. So, here we will uh, look at how uh, to uh, write the equations for thermodynamic variables across the uh, shock. So, uh, we have to appropriately combine the 3 equations and we begin from the continuity equation rho 1 u 1 equal to uh, rho 2 u 2 and here uh, directly you will get uh, u 2 equal to u 1 into rho 1 by rho 2. Now, uh, we take the momentum equation p 1 plus rho 1 u 1 square is equal to p 2 plus rho 2 u 2 square. So, uh, we have uh, this equation. Now, here we substitute uh, for um, u 2. So, p 1 plus rho 1 u 1 square is equal to p 2 plus here you get rho 1 square u 1 square by rho 2. Now, p 2 minus p 1 is uh, you can take this common rho 1 u 1 square and you will get 1 minus uh, uh, rho 1 by rho 2 uh, and uh, this it can be written as p 2 minus p 1 is equal to rho 1 rho 2 minus rho 1 by rho 2. So, uh, p 2 minus p 1 by rho 2 minus rho 1 multiplied by uh, 
So, this is uh, rho 2 by rho 1 is equal to u 1 square. I think that is the expression that we get over here. So, the same um, uh, analysis can be carried out by uh, uh, expressing u 2 u 1 in terms of u 2 and uh, then getting the equation for u uh, 2. If you proceed along the same directions uh, you get u 2 square is equal to p 2 minus p 1 uh, by rho 2 minus rho 1 multiplied by rho 1 by rho 2. So, uh, you get uh, these two terms and now uh, uh, we have used uh, the an, uh, mass and momentum conservation. Now, we move to energy conservation which is uh, h plus uh, u 1 h 1 plus u 1 square by 2 is equal to h 2 plus u 2 square by 2 and here now uh, h is uh, nothing but e plus p by rho and if you substitute that you get e 1 plus p 1 by rho 1 plus u 1 square by 2 is equal to e 2 um, plus p 2 by rho 2 plus u 2 square by 2. Uh, now, uh, we have the expressions for u 1 square and u 2 square uh, just from the uh, previous slide. We uh, substitute that uh, here uh, in these uh, terms and uh, we get p 2 minus p 1 by rho 2 minus rho 1 rho 2 by rho 1. Uh, now, uh, this can be simplified because you have all the terms related to pressure and density over here and you have energy terms over here. So, now if you express this E 2 minus E 1. So, E 2 minus E 1 is equal to uh, you get um, P 1 by rho 1 uh, plus half P 2 minus P 1 by rho 2 minus rho 1. Uh, multiplied by uh, rho 2 by rho 1 okay, minus p 2 by rho 2 minus half p 2 minus p 1 by. So, you get this term over there. Now, from here you, all we have to do is simplify the uh, right hand side of this equation and there you can observe that there is the group of terms like this p 2 by rho 2 and plus half uh, p 2 minus p 1 by rho 2 minus rho 1 multiplied by rho 2 by rho 1 minus uh, rho 1 by rho 2 this is what you get. So, to do this this term is uh, nothing but rho 2 square minus rho 1 square by rho 1 rho 2 and uh, here you have the term uh, rho 2 minus rho 1. So, this term will come out to be half uh, p 2 minus p 1 multiplied by rho 2 plus rho 1 by rho 1 rho 2. So, now this can be algebraically uh, simplified. Uh, uh, and uh, after simplification uh, this is the expression we get e 2 minus e 1 is equal to p 1 plus p 2 by 2 uh, multiplied by 1 by rho 1 minus 1 by rho 2. So, uh, e 2 minus e 1 is the energy uh, difference internal energy difference across the shock wave while p 1 plus p 2 by 2 is an average pressure. Uh, uh, written here and uh, uh, 1 by rho 1 minus 1 by rho 2 uh, written if expressed in terms of specific volume is uh, v 1 minus uh, v 2 as change in uh, specific volume. So, change in internal energy is equal to average pressure multiplied by change in uh, volume uh, specific volume. Uh, so, this equation is known as the Hugonio equation uh, and uh, one can uh, readily see uh, that uh, there is uh, no velocity terms over here. It purely expresses um, only in terms of uh, thermodynamic uh, variables and also here when 
uh, getting to this equation we have never uh, stated any assumptions of perfect gas. So, this is valid for uh, a general case. So, Hugonio equation is a general equation it is valid for uh, shocks in all kind of uh, gas dynamic uh, conditions. So, uh, let us look at the uh, plot. So, this is a Hugonio curve uh, it plots all possible uh, shock states uh, starting from 1 where uh, 1 represents the um, upstream conditions. So, upstream once you know the upstream uh, pressure and uh, temperature uh, consequently the specific volume uh, this point can be located and the Hugonio curve can be drawn. And now, how do we get to a particular uh, shock? if you know a particular um, uh, velocity or you know the particular Mach number for that uh, we draw what is known as the uh, rally line. This is the uh, rally line, rally line uh, uh, just comes about from uh, the momentum equation P plus uh, rho V square equal to constant. Uh, we can use uh, the energy equation uh, to use uh, to combine with this because rho v is constant across uh, the shock. So, um, if we can express v in terms of so uh, this is g is another constant. So, this becomes uh, p plus uh, g square by rho is equal to constant or p plus g square specific volume is equal to constant p is equal to plus c. So, this is uh, the equation of a straight line. So, rally lines are uh, straight lines uh, uh, in the p v diagram and you should also notice that uh, it has a negative slope g square is positive. So, it has it is always having a negative slope. Uh, so, uh, now, uh, this uh, Hugonio equation as we al already know it just uses uh, the conservation equations and uh, the conservation equations do not uh, specifically say uh, whether a certain uh, thermodynamic state is possible or not uh, that comes from entropy conditions. So, um, from one we, we can draw rally lines going either way uh, with a decrease in uh, pressure and increase in specific volume or an increase in pressure and decrease in specific volume and this is the, the case of an expansion shock it is unphysical. So, this is not possible uh, while only the uh, shock wave which is a compression uh, shock is uh, possible. So, uh, with the help of rally line which he has the information of velocity uh, which will figure out figure in the term g square uh, one can locate a particular shock. So, Hugonio can give you all possible shock states passing through an initial point 1. Okay. So, Hugonio is an, a general equation you can use it for uh, any mm, type of shocks in any gas dynamic medium. So, now we come to a particular application of uh, the shocks uh, until uh, a few class uh, classes ago we were discussing the applications of uh, isentropic equations uh, to uh, the uh, problem of flow measurement and the pitot and uh, we discussed the subsonic pitot where in a compressible uh, medium. Uh, or in a compressible flow uh, one cannot use the Bernoulli's equation, but rather we have to use the uh, condition that you achieve stagnation pressures within the pitot, pitot measures stagnation pressure and uh, the relationship with the stagnation pressure and static pressure is given by an isentropic process and from this uh, one can get uh, the Mach number. So, uh, this is for a, a subsonic pitot. Now, let us go to the condition that um, the same pitot this device pitot is uh, used is to measure uh, the flow 
uh, speed or flow velocity uh, what happens when we put this pitot inside a uh, supersonic flow. So, uh, it is now very clear that in uh, supersonic flows uh, if uh, you place some bodies or you put uh, some uh, devices uh, then uh, uh, from our earlier discussions you should understand uh, that in order for the flow uh, to turn over the body uh, the flow has to know that the body is present over here. Uh, in a supersonic flow this cannot be accomplished because uh, information does not propagate in all directions. In order to facilitate this uh, uh, ultimately you get a shock wave, a shock wave uh, envelops the body this is what is coming over here. So, a shock wave envelops the pitot, so there is a pitot uh, there is a shock wave in front of the pitot. And uh, what the pitot measures actually is uh, stagnation pressure uh, downstream of the shock. So, uh, if you take like, a look at the zoomed in picture this is the uh, idea over here that you have the um, stagnation streamline it is going through the, uh, right here and this is the pitot and uh, very close to the nose of the uh, pitot. Uh, there is a shock and this shock is normal to the uh, free st uh, the streamline at this point. So, one can apply the normal shock conditions across the uh, shock and the pitot actually measures uh, the stagnation pressure downstream of the shock wave. So, uh, if you put a pitot in a uh, supersonic uh, stream then it does not measure the stagnation pressure. Uh, of the stream uh, rather it measures the stagnation pressure downstream of the shock. And uh, by now it is very clear to us that uh, stagnation pressure uh, decreases across the shock. So, P02 is less than P01 and it is not the same as uh, P01. So, now we have to express uh, so. Uh, uh, just going by the similar measurements. So, how uh, measurements are done usually in some experiments and practically is that usually the pitot is placed inside the duct or within the free, free stream and uh, P02 is measured and you need always one more measurement that is the static pressure you need to measure. Uh, and for that the measurement is usually taken on the walls of the tunnel uh, somewhere where static pressure of the stream can be easily measured. So, this is P 1. So, usually the measurement is P 0 2 and P 1. Uh, the stagnation pressure uh, ratio is expressed for P 0 2 by P 2 that is for the downstream uh, conditions of the shock and it is dependent on m2 square, but we know that uh, all these values uh, p2, uh, p02, m2 all of them depend only on uh, the upstream Mach number. So, they can be expressed as functions of only upstream Mach number. So, that is what is done over here p02 by p1 is what we are uh, usually measuring. And P02 by P1 is written as P02 by P2 and P2 by P1. P2 by P1 can be expressed in terms of upstream Mach number. P02 by P2 expressed in terms of M2 square. M2 square can be written in terms of M1 square. And so, we get this uh, expression for P02 by P1. Uh, this is known as uh, Raleigh's Pitot uh, formula. And uh, this uh, formula is uh, generally uh, given in uh, normal shock tables along with all other uh, 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 equations and uh, the pressure ratios and temperature ratios. Uh, because this is a very common measurement uh, that is ma made and uh, we would like to know the uh, Mach number. So, once you know P02 by P1 either by using the uh, tables or uh, by using calculators uh, we can get back what is uh, Mach number. So, this is uh, Raleigh-Pitot formula. So, uh, with uh, 
uh, this we come to uh, the uh, end of uh, discussions on um, stationary normal shocks. In this particular discussion, uh, we used um, rho 1 u 1 equal to rho 2 u 2, uh, p 1 plus rho 1 u 1 square equal to p 2 plus rho 2 u 2 square um, and h 1 plus u 1 square by 2 is equal to h 2 plus u 2 square by 2. So, uh, in all these, these are uh, conservation equations for a, a steady flow and this uh, what is considered is a normal shock is steady in a supersonic flow. Uh, now, uh, next uh, what we would discuss is uh, the moving shocks, uh, shocks can also move uh, typical cases that you uh, one can encounter is uh, inside shock tubes or um, in cases of uh, explosive events when there is a blast wave. The blast wave also moves uh, rapidly in, at supersonic speeds. So, we will see how we can analyze uh, such uh, shock waves in the next class.